Imagine living in a world where sunlight puts your life at risk and standing out in a crowd is the norm. For many people with albinism, this isn't imagination, it's reality. Okay, first let's set the record straight. Albinism isn't a disease or something you can catch. It's a genetic difference present in all animals and in every human ethnicity. Why do some people with albinism have vision problems? And what makes sunlight so hazardous to them? This is your body on living with albinism. Albinism is like a unique twist in the story of our genes. It's caused by a genetic difference that makes the body unable to produce typical amounts of melanin. Melanin is the pigment that gives color to our eyes, hair, and skin. If you have albinism, your body could have low levels of melanin or be completely devoid of it, giving you pale features. In the United States, about 1 in 20,000 people are born with albinism. And for many with the condition, it poses some unique challenges. It's a giant Q-tip. Hank! Living with albinism. People with albinism lead everyday lives, but many have to be careful about what they wear. Having little to no melanin makes your skin much more sensitive to the sun's UV radiation, leading to a higher risk of sunburn and skin cancer. In the eyes, melanin plays a crucial role in the development of specific optical structures, particularly the fovea. The fovea is a small central region of the retina responsible for sharp, detailed central vision. In people with albinism, the fovea may not form completely due to a lack of melanin during eye development. This can lead to reduced visual sharpness and other vision problems. Many people with albinism need glasses or special visual aids to help with these visual challenges. And there are social difficulties too. People with albinism are often teased or misunderstood. I would also be called like white boy or white chocolate or snowflake and it really depressed me as a child. The movie industry often misportrays people with albinism, depicting them as villains, demons or freaks. Like some people with the skin condition vitiligo, black people with albinism often battle prejudice and can sometimes feel a misplaced sense of identity within their community. People take one awkward glance at me and they decide that I'm not a part of the beloved black community that I love so much. They used to say, why are you trying to be black? Or then, and then they would say, why are you trying to be white? Now, you might think that albinism is easily defined, but it's not as straightforward as it may seem. Did you know that there's a spectrum to albinism? Types of albinism. If you saw someone like this in the street, would you think they had albinism? You'd be surprised. Excuse me? Oculocutaneous albinism, or OCA, is the most common type of albinism, affecting the eyes, hair, and skin. But there are specific skin, hair, and eye color changes that distinguish the subtypes of OCA. For instance, type 1 is known to have white hair, pale skin, and light-colored irises. Type 2, on the other hand, is less severe, leading to yellowy hair that might be a lighter shade of blonde or brown. Type 3 usually affects dark-skinned people, giving them reddish-brown skin, red hair, and hazel or brown irises. In some rare cases, you could be born with ocular albinism, which mostly affects your eyes. Now, there's no cure for albinism, as it's not a disease, but part of a person's genetic makeup. However, there are ways to manage it. Scientists are exploring gene therapies, but as of now, they're more in the realm of science fiction than reality. The focus right now is on understanding and support. Now, while albinism isn't overly common in America, its prevalence is much higher in sub-Saharan Africa. One in 5,000 people here have the condition, and for many of them, it can be pretty challenging. Albinism in Africa. Albinism presents some unique struggles in Africa, especially in rural economies that are reliant on farming. In some areas of Africa, up to 90% of people with albinism die from skin cancer before age 40. 
with limited health services and the high cost of sunscreen, many struggle to afford protection. A two-week supply of sunscreen costs $15 in Tanzania, a country where most people live on less than $1.50 a day. And this isn't the only risk threatening their lives. In some areas of Africa, people with albinism have been hunted for their body parts. They can fetch up to $75,000 on the black market with the claim that they possess magical powers. Since the year 2000, at least 75 people with albinism in Tanzania have been killed for superstitious reasons. In some other countries, children with albinism are abandoned or they become the victims of infanticide. And while many organizations and advocates are raising awareness about albinism worldwide, it's still an everyday challenge for many people. Living with albinism is unique and sometimes dangerous, but it's also a captivating window into human genetics, appearance, and diversity. By learning more about it, we can build empathy, awareness, and kindness. The world's a more beautiful place with all our different shades and colors. Now, for people with vitiligo, their skin tells another unique and beautiful story. We'll explore why in another episode of Your Body On.